Welcome back to another episode of WordPress Tutorials with Pixelmark. In today's episode, we're going to go over another related post plugin. If you watched the previous episode on the Uzo related post plugin, you heard about some of the benefits like um, increasing the amount of time a person spends on your website, uh, increasing your search engine rankings because of the fact that time on site is a ranking factor for most search engines out there um, and also the benefit of potentially converting a website visitor to uh, meet one of your goals whether it's to make a purchase click on an affiliate link subscribe um, to your email newsletter things of that nature the more time a person spends on your website the more likely <clears throat> it is that they will convert um, to meet one of your goals so previously we uh, reviewed um, another related pro post plugin, but in this episode we're going over, <coughs> excuse me, the contextual related post plugin. It is another very popular, uh, very well maintained plugin with some really good reviews. So let's take a look at what some of the features are. Um, pretty much, it's uh, you know it does what it says it does. It is a way to display related posts in a blog article uh, that you have on your WordPress powered website. It's installed on 70,000 plus um, websites and it is has been maintained since six months ago. It has 4.8 stars out of five uh, with a significant amount of five stars um, reviews. And these are some of the key features that it provides. Um, so let's take a look at how we can use this on our website. I'm just going to copy this right here and then I'm going to go into the dashboard on my local host uh, which is a duplicate of my production website but I do most of my testing on my local server before I install them on my production sites. Alright so in the back end of your website you're going to go over to the plugin section click on add new From there, in the search plugins field, you're going to place the name of the plugin we're going to install, which is contextual related post. Once you do that, uh, you're going to be presented with the result, which is the same one that we uh, took a look at before, which is this one. And we're going to install uh, this plugin. Once we install it, we will then be presented with the activate plugin link over here. We're going to activate the plugin. Then once you do that, you see that it is now on in your active plugin section. You can go to the settings link over here or in your settings link in the sidebar, you're going to see the related post there. So we're just going to click on that one real quick. So this is the um, contextual related post uh, dashboard and it gives you some information it says cache output cache is extremely important uh, because it decreases decreases the load time of any particular uh, post that you have and this one plays nice with some of the most popular ones like WP super cache and the W3 total ca total cache plugins which are very popular you can choose where you want it to um, be featured on your blog. You can also add this um, function into your single.php file of your theme. You can set the priority level. You can choose if you want to show the meta box. You can, if you have multiple, uh, you know, users on your on your uh, website, like editors and authors and things of that nature. You can check this off to only allow for the admins. You could also have a link to their website if you want. It's optional um, to give them a little bit of fobs. Then you can choose how many related posts you want to display. You can choose the time frame of when, how far back you want it to go. And then you can choose based on, find related posts based on content as well as title. So you can check that out. Um, and again, you can choose post types to include. These are the results. Uh, list of post pages, 
uh, IDs to exclude from the results, etc. Then you have the output option. So this is the title of the related post. You can change the H3 tag to like an H2 if you want or an H4. Um, and you can change the text inside. I just leave it uh, that way. You can choose what happens if there are no posts. You just put blank, no output. You can put, change the length of the excerpt. And these are just some other features here. You can have it open up in a new tab or new window, or you can have it with a no follow attribute. These are, this is how you can customize the output. You know, you have your URL tags and your ally tags, the unordered list and the list items. And this is how to handle some of the thumbnails. And then you can choose the width, crop mode, things of that nature. So this is some of the basic stuff. This is how it looks with the rounded thumbnails. And then if you want no styling, you can choose no styling. It'll remove some of that stuff. And if you want to put in some custom CSS, you can do that as well, right there. You can choose to um, display in your feed if you want. So now we're going to go back to the top. And then you see you have these links over here. So instead of being individual dashboard pages, they just jump to the sections of, uh, of the actual location of that feature uh, where you can customize it. So that's pretty much it. Um, we can save the options. And then let's take a look at how it looks on our site. Let's go to the front end. Then go to the blog. And then we're going to go to this article right here. All right, so you know a person reads your article. They're going to, you know, hopefully enjoy it. They're going to find it useful. Once they get to the end, they're going to be presented with these uh, related posts. Um, it looks very large because I do have my zoom set to high since I'm on a high resolution display. Um, so it does look you know, pretty large. You can customize the way it looks, but as you can see, it is very helpful because this is how a person will end up spending more time on your website because once they find, read an article, hopefully they enjoyed it, and then they see there's related articles that are similar um, to this one, so they would potentially click on that one. Um, you know, and then they'll, you know, just continuously read the article and hopefully continue to go to another website, another article on your website. Um, this decreases your bounce rate. It helps with potentially converting a website visitor um, to, you know, do something that you uh, want them to do on your site. The longer they are on your site, the greater the potential of them, you know, subscribing, uh, purchasing, clicking on a link. Uh, things of that nature. So um, the contextual related post plugin is uh, the second plugin that I reviewed, and I find it to be <clears throat> just as useful um, as the other plugin that we reviewed earlier. Um, it is um, highly recommended. Recommended. It's feature uh, rich. Um, it's pretty very fast. It's well supported. Um, as you can see, it has almost five stars. Installation is very simple. Um, it's out of the box, it just works, and that's important because when you're managing a website, you don't want to have to potentially deal with a million options just to get it started. Um, so by um, having some good default settings built into it, um, it just makes it work seamlessly on your website. Um, and then when you do have time, you can just go in there and customize um, how it functions, how it displays. Um, you can make it match your website more by aligning the CSS, you know, more with your website. Um, so I find that to be very useful um, since it is something that, um, you know, is beneficial for your on-site uh, retention uh, web of your website visitors. So if you want, uh, take a look at the contextual related post plugin. Um, and I give this one five stars. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. I hope you found this episode uh, useful. And if you have any thoughts or ideas, please leave them in the comment section below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.